And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the Valley of the Judged. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me is my good brother here in the temple, the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadari Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence, good brother Xanatrix. That's official starting today. <laughs> yes, it is. We are back once again with another class overview of Veil of the Void. And la ladies and gentlemen, I have one thing to say on the mat on the matter. If fighting is sure to in to result in victory, then you must fight. Sun Tzu said that. And I'd say he knows a little more about fighting than you do, pal, because he invented it and then he perfected it. Ah. <laughs> uh. But can we rocket jump? Yes. <laughs> we already dealt with a class that had rocket boots weeks ago. I don't think that's the same thing here, Monk. Good enough for Gunner. <laughs> <laughs> it, damn it. He's got me there. He's got me there. But yes, this week we are tackling the soldier, which... Um, a lot of people would look at the look at the name and assume that assume that it's going to be this game's version of the basic fighter. I um I have made I've made very clear that I have issues with how the quote unquote world's greatest role playing game allegedly handles the idea of fighters or fighting man in the early days. The selling point yeah. of oh you can use and you can use any weapon is not uh, is not all that special when for the most part people are gonna people are gonna stick to a certain loadout and not really switch around and definitely aren't going to bother with the rigmarole of the amount of the um, action tax that is switching weapons in combat. And even more, even more so when there are certain weapons that people are going to stick to for practical purposes, i.e., sword and board. I remember when fourth I remember when fourth edition came out, and people were like, "Well, what if I wanted to be a ranged fighter?" When's the last time you saw someone be a ranged fighter? That's when you get the meme comic of the. Uh... Of the of the guy raising his hand and opening his mouth and then his finger curling down and his mouth closing into a grumpy face. <laughs> but the the concept because of because of that, I think that, I think that, I've always said that if you want to see the litmus test on how well on how well a game handles its mechanics. Look at how they treat the look at how they treat the most martial of characters. If they cuz the big pro, the big problem that I and a whole lot of people have had with the whole concept of fighter is that they are just basic attack. All day every day just basic attack. Oh, but as they level up they can do more basic attacks in a single round. Whoop That's dee. still just Fuck. basic fucking attack. Yeah, even Esper had pointed this had pointed this out years ago. The idea the idea of just to, of I, I know someone I know some people might bring up but they, but but they're be, but they're better at wielding weapons and armor. It's still just a static modifier to say it with me folks, basic attack. A static modifier to how they deal out basic attacks. It's a static modifier of how they receive attacks, and that is it. It doesn't matter how many modifiers you put on it if they're only do. It is still lipstick on a pig. And among the grognardy end of things, I've been hearing the argument that fighters aren't supposed to be powerful. Something that I made fun of in the musing. Culture has no s 
license. Because that was something I heard completely unironically back then, and I still hear it. It's still said to this day, Monk, and it's still said completely unironically to this day, which is the real damning part. Which... If, presumably, fighters are, are not supposed to be powerful, then what the hell is the point of having them in the game? Yeah. Um, remember that Tabletop is all about the, the, the fantasy that you are trying to fulfill, and ostensibly, in a primarily combat-based Tabletop, part of that fantasy is being powerful in combat. I've seen some people say that say that it say that it's far more realistic to have that than have a bunch of fa a bunch of fancy ass maneuvers. Um, Riddle of Steel says otherwise. I just point at all of the Shaolin Temple Kung Fu. Oh yeah, sure, they've got a bunch of hand to hand, and that's where you get your monkish types. But have you ever seen them fight with fucking weapons? And no, it's not like they're special weapons like the monkey stick. I mean, with a proper gun or a proper dao, hmm. which most of you Wuxian Chancha readers out there should know as sword and saber, respectively. It's <laughs> it's it's a normal weapon, a, a Chinese straight sword and the Chinese saber, very much normal weapons, and they have a bunch of maneuvers for them because fighting effectively with a weapon is more than just swinging it around even if we were to stick with just europe just european weapons and equipment it still applies this is the one time i will do this monk this is the one time as much as we have been tearing down shadowversity he has a point that forms of combat make those weapons more effective in combat as a HEMA enthusiast. Devil gets his credit where it is due. Mm -hmm. Now, with all the... Now, obvious from the, from the brief um, glint that we looked into beforehand when it came to the soldier class for Veil of the Void, um, it is clear that it's not trying to be the fighter in that regard, in anything close to that regard. But because of certain elements, I felt that there was enough connective tissue to bring that up. And I know I've brought up the rant about the fighter, or say the third edition monk. In fact, I even wrote a, I even wrote a report about everything I hated about the third edition monk, but way back in the day, that was twelve pages long. You had too much time on your hands. Why waste you? Why waste it on negativity? Because spite is a powerful muse. And Fair. So, and somebody I'll give wants that one to know to you. exactly why I was so pissed off about the monk. I'll give that to you. That's fair. And the reason that I keep bringing these kind of things up is these are ha these are habits that. The only people who who stick to them are people who are at, are in the mindset of tradition for its own sake, and obviously that is not a position that I that I hold. And while I'm not, while I'm certainly not in the camp of people um, people taking the approach of we need to be critical of the th of the things we enjoy in some bad in some bad faith ideological bullshit. I do think that when we that as designers, when we decide to put in a mechanic, and this is something I that is tangentially related to my interviews, a question that should be asked is why. And if you don't have an if you don't have an answer, then why are you using that mechanic? This this stems all the way back to the to the um the questions you should ask about designing a game in the first place though mm -hmm. you know what is your game trying to achieve and how are you achieving it yes so that why is i i would assume in my personal brainstorming way of thinking of things 
that that's just an extension of those original questions. Here's a mechanic. Why are you adding it? I don't have an answer to that. Then don't add it. Okay. And that simplifies things. I know during FF Legend, we've we've come across things that sound cool. And we're like, should we keep that? And then we think about it just that little bit further. And we're like, it doesn't fit. No. Check it out. Mm-hmm. And obviously, if I can reskin it to make it fit, I'd re- I, if I can uh, rework it to make it fit, I'd I'd prefer that. But um, some t- but sometimes that's not possible, and in other times, I f- I find my I find myself in the position of a officer training academy in the Capellan Federation. <laughs> Confederation. <laughs> uh, yeah. To sum to sum it up, there. There's a joke that Tex has done and I, and I and I have enjoyed regarding officer training in the Capellan Confederation, where you, where um blo- where blocks are meant to be pushed into holes uh, holes of corresponding size of corresponding shapes and sizes. This results in two types of officers: those who are moderately intelligent and those who are very strong. I wonder if there's ever been someone who's been both. Mercer? Okay, yeah, I can see it. Or just I would I would bring up I would bring up anybody in Snords or Regulars, but that's a, that's a moot point because Snords is weird. Well, it's in the name Irregulars. I like I liken Snords the Regulars to the 31st century version of Florida Man. Ah yes, four Florida men who tried to make gas cheaper for everybody. <laughs> Not all heroes wear capes. It but... was a time the Florida men were harnessing their chaos for good, and you fuckers put them in jail for it. But all, but all that, all that aside, let's start with the op- let's start with the opening salvo when it comes to the soldiers. <clears throat> Most soldiers are ordinary people who have an aim in mind. Not all intentions are for the greater good, but the soldier corps do not care. They accept any that desire to learn the ways, though it is not for the faint of heart. The corps utilizes rigorous and advanced training methods. Many quit or die before they can reach their goal. Well, it's good to know some things don't change. The few that outlast this training reach their final state of a unique cybernetic enhancement which improves their combat prowess beyond any other profession. They can master different combat styles and weapons with little training. After they receive their implant, they graduate from their chosen corps and follow a new path. Many soldiers join their core army or become mercenaries using their new power. However, those that survive and remember their goal tend to chase that goal. With the newfound power of their implant and training, they become the deadliest fighters on the field. I like that idea. These guys are meant to do all the killing. Or at least most of it. Mm -hmm. So, starting proficiencies. With weapons, all starting ranged weapons in the core rulebook, and the combat saber. Nice. They're prof- ar- for armor, heavy and medium. For tools and specials, an auto loader. Makes sense. Let's see, with leveling HP, leveling beyond level one, for upon each level up, add two d six or seven plus vitality to your max HP. I think that's the largest pool we've seen dice wise. Yeah. Usually I th- usually it's only 1d6. 1d6 plus like 1d3 or 1d6 plus like a static number. Mhm. So then we get to the starting items, either a sniper or plasma rifle, a plasma pistol and one sonic rapier, synthetic medium armor, 6d6 times a thousand system credits and one level in weapons master i've got a i've got a cut in here um 
you know, I I see that these soldiers are meant to be dead killy, um, to quote the orcs. Um, but it also looks like they're focusing on weapons master for that starting bonus level. Um, but with the fact that they have, you know, starting proficiency in all ranged weapons, and they start with a plasma pistol and a sonic rapier, um... <clears throat> You're thinking is that there, they should be that they should shoot they should be able to They should be able between, to choose between weapons master and dual wielding. Yeah. I mean these guys are supposed to be the killers. So they should be able to kill and deal death in all ways known to well the galaxy. Mhm. So then we get to our level 1 abilities, the first one being combat cybernetics. Unique cybernetic enhancements give you different abilities based on which weapon you are currently wielding. You cannot be ambushed in combat and may participate in all surprise rounds. Holy shit. So Well we found <laughs> we found the reason why using all the weapons are good, Monk. Yeah. Um and it's kinda taking a step that we've touched that we touched upon when we talked about doing fighters. Different abilities for different weapons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, sniper guns. While equipped with a sniper gun, you gain an additional plus 10 squares in short range and plus 25 in long range. You may both move and aim. Reloading a sniper rifle is treated as a regular reload action. <laughs> huh. So, for, perfect for those who want to be a Vindicare. Yeah, th th that, that, that right there is, is Levy. Mm -hmm. But then that just once again poses the question, can love bloom on the battlefield? Yeah, I walked into that. <laughs> rifles. On rifles with the sustain effect, the weapon does not overheat. When unjamming a weapon, you may still move your full movement. So, Daka. Well, there's our orc shooter, boys. Yep. Pistols. Your pistols deal additional damage based on your current level, at most an additional plus 10 damage. <laughs> so you're already getting bonus damage on pistols from the very beginning. It caps out at 10, but still, mm -hmm. in 10 levels you're going to get a bunch of stuff for your kit, too. Staffs and wands. All spells you cast do so with plus 1 bonus die. The spell range is increased by 3 squares. So we even have gish options. Well, remember, anything can be a gish. Anything can take spells from a from a, a spell tree, so long as they take arcanting as an expertise. Mm -hmm. Flamethrowers. Monk wants the flamethrower. <laughs> flamen vuffa. It vuffs flamen. Flamethrowers gain an alternate fire mode. You can now hit targets with a blast of condensed air. It's pyro! <laughs> it's fucking pyro! <laughs> this air pushes all targets three squares away from you and inflicts force damage. <laughs> Soldier and pyro? What? Let's see, melee. Freely draw slash stow a melee weapon during your action phase, even between attacks. While wielding any one melee weapon, you gain an additional plus two bonus dice when deflecting. Wait a minute. You're telling me that I can slash with my sonic rapier, switch out to my plasma pistol, and then shoot with my plasma pistol? Between attacks. It says between attacks, Monk. Yes. That's... What the fuck? <laughs> and shields. Yep. Shields now reflect 10% of the damage taken back to the target. Shield and sonic rapier, then swap out the rapier for your plasma pistol at close range. Yep. Let's see, then we have part of the pack... I sh and I should note, um, combat cybernetics and part of the pack are exclusives. 
You have been part of the corp since you started down the path of of the soldier. Choose which corp you were tra you were trained and served under and gain their benefits. This is a one time choice. So you got to choose carefully depending on what you want to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Looks like we have five core here, at least in the core rulebook. Yep. Oh. So first is the Blood Pact. Those who form a pact with this core learn the power of infusing their own life essence into attacks. As an extra action, you may imbue your weapon with your blood, reduce your own max HP by 1d6, and your weapons inflict an additional 1d6 pure damage. This effect lasts five rounds. The lost max HP returns, but is not healed. At level 10, weapons inflict 2d6 additional damage instead of 1d6. Five round cooldown. It's fucking Dark Knights. They cast from HP to make their weapon attacks better. Mm -hmm. So next is Cataclysm Division. The mm -hmm. Cataclysm core consists of those soldiers who have experienced traumatic events. They have taken that pain and used it to fuel their power. Once per combat, target a 7x7 area within 15 squares and fracture the ground. All beings in the area must take a contested dodge slash muscle slash balance check. If they fail, they take 3d6 plus player level in piercing damage and roll with an auto miss die on their next check. So... Okay. I... They cast Earthquake, Monk. Mm-hmm. And that's, if, uh, that's an interesting one. It doesn't say that it that airborne enemies automatically dodge. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't. Mm. So next is Howling Squadron. Soldiers belonging belonging to the Howling Squadron are those who have experienced death. As part of their training, they are killed and travel through the realm of death, attempting to receive his blessing. If they survive, they return to this plane with the ability to inflict the new Agony condition on their adversaries. Agony may be activated as an action. Agony forces an adversary to perform a contested finesse mentality check. If they fail, they take 2d6 plus player level in pure damage and are knocked prone as shrieking sound penetrates their skull. Five round cooldown. Lexus? Yep. See, next is Mythic Armada. The core of the Mythic Armada understands the power and effects of the Arcane. You may attempt to deny an Arcane spell cast once every four rounds. Roll a contested Arcanting check, uses your finesse. If you succeed, you cancel their Arcane summoning and inflict five plus player level pure damage on the caster. Twice per short rest, you may cast a free known Unknown or un unknown novice level spell from a non unique spell tree. Which is every spell tree besides Natura. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's even more dipping into those who want to be a uh, ma a magic soldier. Oh. Magical street samurai. So next is Shadow Vanguards. The Shadow Realm has touched those who are from this core. Their bullets penetrate walls up to one square or five feet deep. Passing through a wall this way reduces the travel of the bullet by half. You may now walk through a one square deep wall unless made of shadow resistant material slash magic. That's a good Here's way your... to say fuck your cover. Fuck your cover and hello assassins. Mm-hmm. I get the feeling that th that this that they probably field shotguns a lot. Would make sense. So these these five core definitely are going to affect how someone wants to build their character. I um I like the I like the howling squadron. Because just 
Just imagine you have someone from Howling Squadron teamed up with a Mecromancer. Mm -hmm. You've both been to death. One of you likes to bring things back from death. Y'all can fuck shit up with death. Yep. <sighs> oh, you also gain an extra skill point. At level 3, you gain Wrist Launcher. In combat, you may use a Wrist Launcher to attack an adversary as an extra action. If you succeed, deal 6 plus player level in force damage. Any being within 2 squares of the adversary also takes half damage for round cooldown. It's a wrist-mounted rocket launcher, Monk. Yes, it is. At 4th level, you gain advancement training. Oh, oh before before I before I get to that, I should note wrist launcher not exclusive. But at fourth level, you also gain one of the guns, which is exclusive. You can always find free Roman board with other soldiers and mercenaries. That's useful. Mm -hmm. At fifth level, you gain your first step in your specialization. The three that we'll be getting into later are soldier of of change, adapt tech, and operator code. At 6th level, you gain Assassination Strike. Enhanced Focus allows you to perform attacks with surgical precision. You may target an enemy, sacrifice your movement to line up the perfect strike. You roll with two auto-hit dice. Upon a hit, inflict a critical hit plus minus one. Four round cooldown on a success. Hmm. <laughs> At level 7, you gain advancement training. At level, And Assassination Strike is a non-exclusive. At level 8, you gain Enhanced Reflexes, which is also non-exclusive. You gain plus 1 in the Dodge skill. If you successfully dodge an attack, you may perform an attack against them. Didn't we see Enhanced Reflexes in the Field Knight as well? Possibly. At... Uh at, le at ninth level, you gain Living Weapon, also non-exclusive. You learn all non-unique weapons in two sessions' time. Wielding a weapon with which you are proficient deals an additional five damage. Which include which is which is doing even which is giving you even more, <laughs> which is giving you even more damage for for the um, weapons that you're already proficient in. And that and you're no and that's that would mean that by ninth level you'd be doing an extra fourteen damage with pistols. Yep. I'll um I'll also say that I was wrong. We did not see enhanced reflexes elsewhere. Uh, we saw something with a similar effect, though. I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Let's see. You also gain enhanced tenacity, which is exclusive. If you start combat with two or less determination, gain plus three. <laughs> Let's see. At tenth level, you gain your next specialization ability. You also gain auto attack. Gain an additional attack action to use during your action phase. Which makes things all the more crazy when you consider the melee, ab melee ability at level one. Yep. So I'm, I'm going to I'm going to shoot I'm going to stab you and then I'm going to shoot you, or maybe I'm going to shoot you and then I'm going to stab you. Mm -hmm. At eleventh level, you gain advancement training. At twelfth level, you gain cybernetic improvements. Add plus one bonus level to observation, insight, and weapons master. <laughs> At 13th level, you gain Battlefield Optics, which is non-exclusive. Once per short rest, choose three targets. For the rest of combat, you gain insight to their weakest point. While aiming, you may attempt to hit this specific weak point by increasing the hit difficulty by one. On a success, inflict 2d6 additional pure damage and a critical hit plus two. After you successfully hit it, the weak point is removed. Yep. And that's hey. non-exclusive. That's actually pretty awesome. Hey, it's favorite enemy without the suck. 
and it yeah and it's per short rest and you can do it three times mm -hmm. that's uh pretty awesome at 14th level, you gain Advancement Training. At 15th level, you gain your next Specialization Ability. At 16th level, you gain a Modified Targeting System, which is non-exclusive. You may use your reaction to target an adversary. All allies' next attack on that adversary gains plus one auto-hit die, three-round cooldown. So hey, just... uh, hey, guys! I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, ha I'm gonna. It's, it's literally, um. Space Marines linking their targeting systems. I wonder if that stacks with Battlefield Optics. I don't think you can give them the weak point aiming. I think that's just you. Fair, fair, po fair point. Unless you had a, unless you had a whole squad of soldiers. No, it probably no probably wouldn't work. Never mind. Um, anyway, at 17th level you gain advancement training. At 18th level you gain merciless fighter. Each consecutive attack on the same target adds a merciless stack. Each stack adds plus six damage. You may have three stacks of these at most. They fade away if you do not attack the same target each round. You're saying my first attack does however much damage it would normally do. My second attack does plus 6 damage on top of that. My third attack does plus 12 damage on top of that. And then every attack after that does plus 18 damage. And remember um, you're getting to you're getting two attacks around. Yep. At the very least. Mm -hmm. There's probably some expertises and other things you could take to give yourself more. Yep. At 19th level you gain Gatling Update, which is a non-exclusive. Once every six rounds, you may summon a Plasma Gatling Gun and target an enemy. You sacrifice half your movement and your actions to target an adversary. You then launch a volley of four attacks against the target. These attacks ignore your target's dodge skill and are, affected, are unaffected by your other skills and abilities. However, you roll with plus two bonus dice and an auto-hit die on the attacks. The damage is your equipped weapon's damage. If the target dies and you have attacks remaining, you may attack another adversary within five squares of the previous target. Equip a pistol. <laughs> Equip a pistol. Attack the same thing, all of a sudden merciless fighter stacks. Because it's five consecutive attacks. Mm -hmm. You're going to have... You're going to have your first three attacks are going to get the three stacks on, and each attack after the first is going to have at least one set of additional damage. The fourth and fifth attack are going to have, both have plus 18 damage, plus another 15 damage from li the combination of living weapon and pistols, plus whatever the pistol does. Mm -hmm. Icing on the cake. Yep. At 20th level, you gain your final specialization abilities. And you gain your ultimate, Warmonger. You are the master of combat. Add plus one to your finesse. This may bring you above nine. You are proficient with all non-unique ranged and melee weapons and may reroll two failed finesse skill checks per long rest, including one results. Are you just saying that Warmonger makes your living weapon basically awesome because it's every... you? Uh non-unique weapon you now have proficiency with so all you have to do is get proficiency with unique weapons and then and you're good to go mm -hmm. oh, with whatever unique weapons you might be using at level 20 I should say that is okay okay that's a lot of things you're proficient with yep I can do that I can shoot that thing, and that thing, and that thing too. Oh, and definitely that thing. And I'll cut his heart out with a spoon. Because mm -hmm. I can do that too. So the first specialization we have is Soldier of Change. There are those, there, those who serve the realm of Everchange have a curious effect on the battlefield. 
Odd occurrences have been reported, from prismatic explosions to illusions of butterflies appearing in the middle of a fight. This is to be expected, for the realm of Everchange is unpredictable and wild. A soldier of change is, a con is in constant conflict with the realm's shifting nature of chaos and order. A word of caution. Sylvana, the aspect of change, is fickle, and her realm even more so. So you start out with Everchange Power Shift. Chaos and order are constantly swirling within you. At the start of combat, roll 1d6. On an even, you are powered by order. On an odd, you are powered by chaos. Once every three rounds, when you roll a successful check or skill a successful attack or skill check, roll 1d6 and consult your current powers chart. So and then we have two we have two charts, one for order and one for chaos. So the order one, while powered by order, you gain a few you gain a few effects. One, all attack slash order effects inflict pure damage, and successful hits split and allow you to make an additional attack on an adversary within finesse squares of your target. <laughs> There's twelve entries on the on the chart, so I'm guessing later on we'll see a roll an additional one d six on this. Likely. So first one is so for order rolling a one, choose a target. That target takes two times finesse in ordic damage. Tar the target loses their next action. Two, recharge a weapon with ordic power. This reloads the weapon with to its max capacity and imbues it with energy bolts. These bolts do not use up your standard ammo. This effect lasts until the ammo is emptied or the gun is reloaded. 3. Swap places with a target. 4. You know the answer to the next question asked of you, if the answer is common or knowable. 5. Dash in a straight line up to your movement plus 2, 3, 4, or 5. Any adversary you charge through takes your level in damage. Any PC you run through deals an additional 1d6 damage on their next attack or spell. Nice. Six, roll an additional 1d6 and add it to this chart. Activate that effect and switch power to chaos. Oh, that's how it works. Yeah, so if you roll a six, you get to roll an additional 1d6 to try and get further effects, which means you're going to do a seven through 12 instead. And then afterwards, your power goes over to chaos. Nice. Mm -hmm. Seven, next time you take fatal damage, instead heal your vitality and HP. This effect lasts until fatal damage is dealt. You may only perform this once per week. 8. 2, 3, 4, or 5 glasses of clarity appear in a square adjacent to you. The glasses disappear after 4 rounds or after they have been drunk. 9. You need no sleep or recharge for 1d2 days. You cannot be forced to sleep. So, um... Just want to say that uh, a glass of clarity is an uncommon. Uh, this is a small glass cup with the symbol of order on its front. Any liquid poured into this glass instantly changes into a clear liquid resembling that of water. If the liquid is drunk, the drinker loses all negative mental effects. So that's that that that's what that does. Mm -hmm. It gets rid of debuffs. Okay, so no sleep recharge for 1d2 days. Cannot be forced to sleep at 9. At 10, ten all time stops for 2 rounds. During this time, no extra actions may take place. No extra actions. Mm -hmm. You mean extra action as in the, the, the phase within combat? Or extra action as in any actions at all? I'm thinking any effect that would be considered a extra action. Yeah, I'm thinking so too, but I think it could be clarified a little more. Mm -hmm. 11. A mist wyvern of order rips into the field. It attacks adversaries within the combat field. This beast lasts for 1, 2, 3, or 4 rounds before it returns to its realm. And... 
12, you may choose anything on the list and to either stay within order or switch to chaos. So essentially, if you roll a 6 and then roll another 6, you get to choose whatever the hell you want. And then, do I stay in order? Do I go to chaos? That's... That's fun. I like that. Now, for chaos, while powered by chaos, you gain a few effects. All attacks slash chaos effects inflict chaotic damage. Successful hits explode and deal half damage to all beings within three squares of your target. You just gave the, you just gave your sniper a rocket. Rocket sniper. <laughs> so one, a burst of chaotic energy floods out from you in a straight six square line between towards your target. Everyone in that field takes 1, 2, 3, or 5 d6 chaotic damage. 2. You cannot stop copying another player character at the table. This effect lasts for 4, 3, 2, or 1 rounds. During this time, you may use a reaction to copy one of their attacks made. Does that also count for spells? I think so. If it, at least if it's an arcanting attack. But you'd likely also have to have arcanting as well. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it would just do, you know, nothing. At three, roll 1d6. On even, you age 1d3 years. On odd, you are 1d3 years younger. This lasts four days or until removed. On f four... You are thrown in a random direction every turn for the next three rounds. You are flung eight squares in a random direction. You phase through adversaries and do not give them an RS. Inflict your finesse in damage to yourself and a target that you collide with. At five, you become loud and obnoxious. You cannot perform covert checks and allies within 8, 6, 4, or 2 squares of you. Roll with minus 1 bonus die on covert checks. This lasts 10 minutes. 6 works exactly the same, just with the names switched. Yep. 7. You grow paranoid that everyone in the party is out to get you. You are constantly guarding yourself against everyone. This effect lasts 2d6 minutes. 8. You are transformed into a small cuddler. You have your same stats and health, but you cannot perform attacks. Adversaries that attempt to attack you do so with no bonus dice. You remain in this form until the start of your next turn. 9. I, you, go ahead. I was going to say cuddler goes nowhere, so I don't know what that is. You are incapable of standing still for two rounds. At the end of your action phase, move four squares in a chosen direction. 10. A portal of change opens around you in a 7x7 seven seven area. All beings inside it must perform a hard dodge slash muscle check. On a fail, the great hands of a, chain of a changeler reach through and drag those who failed through the portal. A portal opens on the edge of the battlefield and drops all who were pulled through, inflicting 3, 4, 5, or 6 d6 of damage to all. I think it's supposed to be of chaos damage. Mm -hmm. 11. Your eyes shine a dark energy of chaos. All who look directly at you must make a contested vitality check. If they fail, they must run 6 squares away from you. This provokes an RS. And then 12 is exactly the same as 12 on order, except then you can choose an effect from the chaos table and choose whether to switch or not. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not so sure about the chaos table. I'm kind of not feeling it. I, I, think, I think I understand the method to the madness. I mean, yeah. I think uh, the, the, the issue I have is that there's more... There's more effects here that are, um, what's the best word? Roleplay centric. 
Like, mm-hmm. there's there's one. I see basically one, uh, one real role play centric uh, role over on order, and that's the knowing the answer to a question asked of you. Mm-hmm. Not sleeping or time stopping; those are still very mechanical in nature. Um, because they affect your your resources, and so you aren't expending certain types of resources when you don't sleep or recharge. Mm-hmm. Or aren't required to. Yeah. Whereas there's a there's a lot more over on chaos that are uh, not only role play centric but detrimental, um, such as copying another character or um, being loud and causing covert checks to fail. Mm-hmm. I think the paranoia one would be really bad too. Constantly oh, yeah. on guard. So then, then we you also gain order and chaos. You gain seven order points, or OP, to use during order chaos effects that recharge every short rest. At one, prevent the effect from targeting one being. You may spend an additional point to target an, an additional another being. Two, cancel the effect and re-roll. Three, double the effect. Or four, choose another effect of a lesser number. So you have points to mitigate chaos effects if you need to. Got it. Because that's probably primarily what it's going to be used for. Unless, of course, somebody knows... Somebody gets a big roll, they haven't had to use any, you know, OP, uh, and they get a big roll over on the order table to, say, like, summon the, summon the Mist Wyvern. And you're like, I want this thing to stay on the field long longer. Three OP. Mm-hmm. At 10th level, you gain Altered Destiny... After a player or adversary rolls, you may spend one OP to turn to turn the die either either to a success or a failure. This must be done before the results of the roll are determined. Two round cooldown. <laughs> so, uh, something we failed to point out. Um, soldier change is not a uh, exclusive specialization track. Um, and in fact, the ever change power shift is not even an exclusive skill within the track. Altered mm-hmm. Destiny is, but that's only because it's tied to the OP system mm-hmm. and area and the the, fif- the level 15 specialization we're about to discuss, Area of Lunacy, also is because it's tied to the Order Chaos effect. Yep. No, Aura of Lunacy. Uh, yeah. I meant Advers- to say aura of lunacy. Yeah. Adversaries standing in a 5x5 five five area around you receive detrimental effects based on your current power. If it's order, they roll with minus one bonus dice on all skill checks that target you or an ally within the area field. If it's chaos, if they fail an attack against you within the area field, they're inflicted with the madness condition. This may only affect an adversary that does not currently have a madness condition. Um, let's see here. I'm having trouble finding where the madness condition is, but okay. And at 20th level, you gain Voice of Silvana. You now channel both powers simultaneously, gaining the effects of both Chaos and Order. When you roll on the chart, you may ch- you now choose which one you roll on. Now, that's actually pretty nice. That's a good capstone for that. Oh, you were switching between order and chaos, but now uh, just roll a die. Pick the chart you want to roll on and roll your die. Mm-hmm. Nice. Also, uh, madness was the... I just went back and looked. Madness is the status effect that has you roll on a, on a table to get... Um, you're either knocked prone with laughter, you go into a blind rage, uh, you immediately take 10% max HP in chaotic damage and have paranoia, mm-hmm. uh, maddening sickness, blind for two rounds, or void sickness. Yep. So next we have the adapt tech. 
Adapt techs move as lightning and switch weapons on the fly thanks to their homogenized weapon. This weapon absorbs other weapons, empowering itself and allowing its user to switch between weapons instantly. An adapt tech changes fighting style according to the immediate need. They are the elite force that many soldiers strive to belong to. That sounds pretty awesome, actually, just from that description. Why? Am, once again, I'm thinking of Pandora from DMC4. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Just so, remember, Monk, while Pandora was truly adaptable, it is only with Lucifer that we are all satisfied. <laughs> so first we have homogenization. When you first get this ability, choose one weapon to be your default weapon, then select an additional weapon to assimilate. During a long rest, you may assimilate a weapon in your arsenal into the homogenized weapon. The weapon's stats and effects are added and may now be a selection for you to switch to in battle. This weapon allows you to ignore any proficiency with the assimilated weapon may have required. The weapon can store at max 3, 5, 7, or 10 weapons. If you were to learn a new weapon during a long rest that would send you above the max, you would need to discard one to learn the new one. You may also use a shield instead of a weapon. By bypassing proficiency requirements, does it technically count that you're proficient in that weapon and thus get triggered by living weapon? I get the feeling that it means you're not going to be penalized for not having a proficiency if you don't have it. Yeah, but I figure I'll ask that question now anyway. Mm -hmm. You also gain Adaptable Attack. Per round, you may freely swap between up to two homogenized weapons during your action phase. If you swap a weapon during the action phase, you may immediately perform a free attack on your target with that weapon. Each weapon, when switched to in the action phase, goes into four-round cooldown. And thirdly, at fifth level, you gain defensive reaction. You may use your reaction to switch to a shield stored within your homogenization gauntlet and face it towards an incoming attack. A shield used this way reduces damage by an additional 1d6. Nice. Um, at 10th level, you gain adapted strength. You may, you may use your finesse to perform all melee and ranged attacks. And for defense checks, add 1d6 to all damage rolled. Nice. At 15th level, you gain Virtuous Modification. Add a plus one bonus to a non-finesse virtue of your choice. You may switch which virtue has the plus one bonus at the end of every short rest. <laughs> plus one to whichever other virtue mm -hmm. I want. Every short rest. At 15th level, you gain Virtuous Modification. Add a plus one bonus to a non-finesse virtue of your choice. You, you just said that, Monk. Oops. Whoops. Sorry, my bad. And at 20th level, you gain readjust levels. Your homogenized weapons go into a two-round cooldown instead of four. You may swap between three weapons in combat. Nice. So, I'd say the adapt tech... Is the is the person who says when asked what weapon are you bringing to the what weapon are you bringing to the fight? He answers yes. Yes. Oh. Granted, he has to manage cooldowns, but at the same time, he, that's a hell of a lot of versatility. And the best part, Adapt Tech is a non-exclusive, an entire non-exclusive. Yep. And the third one is Operator Code, which is also non-exclusive. On rare occasions, a powerful and clever soldier will be given the Operator Code to improve their combat cybernetics. 
This code grants them the ability to hack into and control nearly anything. They specialize in the reprogramming, hacking, and controlling of units. They are even capable to use this code to hack into living beings. You get, what? You also gain plus two bonus levels in programming. Hack into living beings. What? I mean, have, haven't we made jokes about biohacks in the past? We have, I don't think on this particular project, but we have. So the first ability that you get is Servitor Command Line. As an action, you may unleash this code on an adversary. If you do, perform a contested programming check. On a success, you may perform one action with the targeted adversary. This may be an attack action, a movement up to half their movement, or a spell or item that is not on cooldown. Four-round cooldown. Huh. You also gain Hypertext. This may be used as an extra action after a successful attack. Perform a contested programming check against the target. On a success, the target rolls with minus two bonus dice on their next check. Hypertext. <laughs> you literally, you put a website in them that makes them bad. Can I imagine that it's the youareanidiot.org website? Something like that. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's just constantly playing you're the man now dog in their head. Mm-hmm. At 10th level, you gain, first, Attribute Overlord. Choose an adversary and perform a contested programming check. On a success, you reduce two of their virtues by one level. This effect lasts until either the adversary is taken out of action or you cancel the effect. This may be performed successfully once per combat. Good for bosses. Mm -hmm. You also gained Upload Command Line. You may upload this code when aboard a vehicle or mech. The uploaded code allows you to use your abilities against adversary vehicles or mechs. Lieth Online. Mm -hmm. At 15th level, you gain Hack Coding. When you attempt a programming check to hack into something, for contested programming checks, gain an auto-hit die. You also gain Break Virus. Once every five rounds as an extra action, you may unleash a programmed virus into a 7x7 seven seven area centered on you. The virus inflicts your finesse plus mentality and pure damage on all adversaries within range. If this hits mechs, vehicles, or prototypes, it inflicts double damage. Adversaries may perform a contested programming check to, admit to take half damage. So no matter what, even if the mechs, vehicles, and prototypes take the contested programming, they're still taking the full damage. Mm -hmm. They're just not taking double damage. And your 20th level spec is Complete Shutdown. Once per combat, you may stun a target for two full rounds. Your attacks and spells against stunned characters inflict 2d6 additional pure damage. Jeez. I really like this one. I really, really like this one, actually. Mm -hmm. And I'd th I think it's safe to say that the soldier does not fall into the trappings of the typical fighter. Absolutely not. Oh, We've got I a little bit of pyro, a little bit of spy in there. Earlier, you had said that you were that you were wondering if if it should have the choice between weapon master and dual wield. Do you still feel that way? Mm. Mm, maybe for the soldier of order or the soldier of change. I mean, because that would add to the chaotic nature if they dual wielded and stuff. Mm -hmm. But as a base class item, probably not. Of course, there's not there's nothing stopping them from picking that from picking that as they level up. Mm hmm But um could you do me a favor and look up the sustain effect when it comes to weapons? Sure. Since we kinda glossed that over 
And I think we'd need to bring that up in order to see how ridiculous one can get with rifles. Okay. Hold on. Sustain fire. Um, roll 1d2 and perform that many additional attacks. If you miss, if any miss, your gun overheats and you cannot use sustain fire until the round after an unjam action. So yeah, this this is the, the soldier with a rifle is definitely is definitely Daka or um the or the one guy who decides to go with Fuller Auto. Mm-hmm. Uh, although you want to know you want to know what's one combination that that's that's at the back of my mind that I think would be really nuts. What's that? A fi a fighter who's decided to dip into mimic, not <laughs> fighter. A soldier who's decided to dip into uh, mimic, mm -hmm. and to and um took adapt tech. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like it'd be a little, little scary. And you want to know what's even scary about Adapt Tech and why it's probably my favorite of the three specializations? Why? Those varied those varied weapon multi attacks. I'm yeah. pretty sure that stacks with Merciless Fighter. Yeah, because Merciless Fighter is uh, any consecutive attack. Mm hmm. Which means they could cap they could cap off um they could cap off their merciless stacks ridiculously easy. As soon as they get the ability to attack again with auto attack, they can do it in one round. Mm -hmm. Which means that which means that as long as they keep attacking, they're going to be doing stupid amounts of damage. Mm hmm. So. And there is, th there certainly is the static modifier thing, but it's done in a way where it doesn't feel like a apology. No, it's done as a way to encourage you to do focus damage because it, mm -hmm. it, the very, the very base class itself feels like it's meant to burn and do focus damage. The DPSE of the DPSE. I'd say. I'd be tempted to say DPS, but um, given the fact that they utilize heavy armor, I think a better analogy would be the bully. Mm-hmm. Well, DPSs tend to be glass cannons. The soldier being able to equip heavy armor does not qualify as a glass cannon. And it's not a slow class, either. No. So this is a lightning bruiser. Mm -hmm. That being that being said, I think people who prefer having multi-target abilities probably wouldn't want to take the soldier. I mean, it it has some multi-target abilities, but compared to other classes, they have not quite not quite enough to justify that leaning. Mm -hmm. Like I said, soldier seems like it's meant to burn down a a, a target. Mm -hmm. It once it ha once it has its mark, it will kill the shit out of it, which kind of goes with that whole focusing on the path thing. And yeah, as an as an aside, if it wasn't clear enough already, that um that soldier mimic hybrid I was talking about probably took mythic armada. <laughs> Now, something I did want to uh, want to point out here was um, some of the equipment keywords. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, you, the, some of the starting equipment is plasma, a plasma rifle or a pla and a plasma pistol, or a sniper rifle and a plasma pistol, plus the sonic rapier. Um. 
plasma as an equipment keyword says that it's it's damage can only be blocked by vibro and plasma weapons um i'm guessing that the uh, the sniper rifle you know how the sniper guns had the upgrade to give you regular reload speed mm -hmm. i'm guessing that most snipers have the equipment keyword full reload which means you take half movement and an action to reload yeah, I could certainly see that. We'll we'll be getting into that further on when we get to equipment. Mm -hmm. But overall, I'd say I'd say the soldier is is pretty is pretty damn good at its job. And the art the art at the back of it, um. I get the feeling that is a um adapt tech soldier. Um Yeah, that looks like it's it's manifesting an assimilated weapon out of nothing. Mhm. Mm Whereas the uh the soldier at the front of it uh looks like a street samurai. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I could looks certainly like a, see it. Looks like a prototype street samurai. Not saying you, not saying you can't play that kind of thing. In fact, it, in fact, I could see how it could be encouraged, especially given how, at a cert at a certain point, you w you will be able to literally wield any weapon that you can find. Mm -hmm. oh. But next week we'll be tackling the Thalmatech. The largest spellcaster in the book. Which, I guarantee fucking to you, we are not getting through... Oh, we are probably only going to be doing the Thalmatech and half of the spell list. <laughs> Thalmatech uses arcane spells, which is all four of the Hellenistic elements. So it has four trees to go through, people. And the superlative tree as well. Mm -hmm. Basically, this is where the bulk of the spell list com comes in. We already ha we already dipped into spell lists three times. Um, ether spells with the necrom with the necromancer, reflection spells with the mimic, and natural spells with the naturalist. But the thaumatech is your. Uh, I get the feeling the Thaumatech is going to be our out-and-out -out wizard. It looks like it. But, you know, we've been surprised before, so... Mm -hmm. Although this... Although maybe Sorcerer would be a bit... Would be a better approach, because... Well, we're not have We're not having to deal with 8-hour rest bullshit. True. Just charge states. Which... Debatably, is worse. Worse in its in what it can do to you to fuck you up. Better in what it actually does to help curb Nova. It is a we've we've already been through this with the previous casting classes. The way charge states curb Nova is so much better than long rest bullshit. Mm-hmm. Especially since if you, um, if one of those charge states decides to go a little bit rampant because you decided to cast a top level spell you shouldn't have, um, everybody's gonna be everybody's gonna be mad at you for a TPK. <laughs> you, uh, you, you critical failed casting a superlative spell. Now everybody dies, and there's no way to cancel that one. I love that. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's so fun. But we'll get more into that next week, Monk. Yeah. And I, I will have, I will have a few surprises in the, in the coming days. Including, one, the fact that I'm going to be on someone else's podcast for a change. Oh, not, be... that, not, not that he's discounting Monk and Monarch, but Monk and Monarch is a co-cast, co so. No. No, this time I this time I'm the one being interviewed. Yep, he's fully gonna be the guy on the other side of the mic this time. Mm -hmm. 
and we'll be recording geek we'll be recording geek watch a little bit earlier to accommodate for the schedules of our get of our guests but this is certainly going to be our one of our more ambitious geek watch um affairs especially with some recent announcements yeah I'd like to I'd like to say it was expertly timed, but since but since we had slotted this in months ago, I can't. Nope. Instead, we shall just say it's marvelous serendipity. Mm-hmm. But that is a story for later on in the week. So until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay. Fucking frosty and unless it's a farm.